So good afternoon, everyone. I know it's Friday and it's a beautiful day out in Pittsburgh, but I'm pretty stoked to catch up with a dear old friend who I haven't had a chance to connect with. And I don't even know how long it's been, but I'll definitely blame a lot of it on COVID because we actually are neighbors mm -hmm. in terms of where we live in our communities, as well as in terms of our work. We're inches from one another on the north side. I'll introduce formally Jane Werner, who's the executive director of the Children's Museum in a second. I want to give a big shout out to Huntington Bank for believing in us and every experiment that we do. It's always so much fun to work with them, but more importantly, they're so active in our community and their civic engagement is definitely noteworthy. And if you don't know them, they've been helping large and small businesses for, for quite a while, but have been really instrumental during COVID in really helping our business community make sure that they stay on their feet and get on their feet and move forward. As everyone knows, it's been a tough 16 months for many. But on a good note is Huntington Bank supports our community in many, many different ways. So reach out to them. 40 by 80, if you see on the screen, that's the wholly owned subsidiary of the Pittsburgh Tech Council. That's the longitude and latitude of Pittsburgh. And that's where we focus on all things that are entrepreneurial and development pathways for people to have careers that might not have had access to those careers. So stay tuned. We're going to talk more about that at a later date. We have muted your microphones and we do that each and every day, but we've also have a chat and the chat section is only to ask our guests questions. It is not to sell your wares. We have plenty of opportunities for people to sell their wares at other times, but today it's only about the executive director, Jane Werner. Jane and I um, go back, I think she's one of the few people that I've known for the entire time that I've been in Pittsburgh. And every time we are together, we always think of incredible ideas and ways to transform the city. But more importantly, is that you're gonna get a little bit of an inside peek into Jane and the work that she's done and continues to do for our community and her passion around the work of the Children's Museum. This is a relic uh, here in our community. The Children's Museum, but it's a, it's known around the world. And she might not brag about it, but I am going to brag about it because I always do. She's also opened up a lab over the over the last couple of years and just done one experiment after another, which is near and dear to all of us who have lived in tech for a long time. It's really about iterative design, and Jane is the epitome of that. So, without any further ado, I'm bringing Jane to the forefront. Thank you so much for taking the time with us. It's Friday. It's a beautiful day in Pittsburgh and probably in lots of places, but really appreciate it. We are recording today, so just want everyone to know that. And we do archive these and they do get shared. So, Jane, amazing to see you. I, I'm giving you a virtual hug. Thank you so much it, for joining us. So, I really want to first just start out with how are you? Like how, how, you know, you have some upcoming things, but I want to know how is Jane doing? That's really important to all of us. How are you doing as a leader and a, mem and a member of our civic community and all that you have your hands in? Well, thanks, Audrey. I, I have to say relic. You said relic in there. I'm like, oh, oh, a relic. <laughs> I don't know. Is that bad? <laughs> Was that a bad thing? I don't know, it makes me feel incredibly old, but yes, and it makes the museum <laughs> incredibly old. Um, no, I'm doing fine. I'm doing just fine. It's been uh, it's been a year. I'll just say it's been a year. I learned a lot. I think we all have. Um, I think we've reprioritized things. We've rethought everything. Uh, the museum has had to think like a startup all over right. again, and in some ways that was pretty thrilling. Um, you know, I, it was it was. A nightmare but at the same time once I got out of the nightmare uh, mode and thought you know what there's some you know there there's some we we have 40 great people left with great talent we have two incredible facilities um, we actually had a little bit of reserve um, you know we we could think differently about who and what the children's museum was during the pandemic and then who and what we were going to become and so it's been it's been a year of growth, um, but it, it did take a while to mourn the death of the Children's Museum the way it was. And I will say that there were times that I looked at my retirement account about I don't know ten times a day. But I'm over that now. I'm I'm excited to to get back. <laughs> That's so funny. I can relate to that. That's great. So 
so, but before we even talk a little bit about the Children's Museum and the why and the legacy, et cetera, and relic, I mean that in just in terms of permanence. That's really what I meant. I didn't mean it in terms of, of age. Um, to tell her how long have you been there and where were you before that? Because you, you sort of have a very interesting journey and you actually knew Fred Rogers and there's, there's all these things that I just would like to highlight. Yeah, so I um, have been at the museum and I, I can't believe it since 1991. Um, yeah, I know. Wow. Uh, but I've been director since 99. Um, and before that, I actually worked at, I had my own little design firm uh, for just a couple of years before I took the job at the Children's Museum. Because I took the job at the Children's Museum, I already had a, a one year old and I was thinking about having another baby. And I thought, ah, this will be easy. I'll do this a couple of years and then I'll, you know, move on. Um, and here I am all those years, 30 years later. Is that, is that what the math says? I don't know, something like that. Um, and so before that, I was at the Franklin Institute. I was the assistant director of at the Franklin Institute. And before that, I actually worked for um, Carnegie Science Center and before right. that, Beale Planetarium. So, and before that, WQED. Um, so it's been kind of, and before that, I worked at a luggage store, <laughs> which I that's think great. Is no, important. that's great. That's great. And you're, and you're there because you love the work that you're doing. So, I mean, you've, yeah. you've taken the museum. The museum is how old now? Uh, it'll be, it's 38 years old. 38 so years. Like so it was started the same time as the tech council, Jonathan and everyone. There must have been something going on there because Leadership Pittsburgh was around that same time. So that was a big inflection point. Yeah, we were 19, 38 years right now, right, Jonathan? It's happening back then. That's kind of cool, man. That's sort of cool. I, I think we should celebrate our 40th birthday all together. That's a great oh, idea. That's a great idea. That's I mean, you know, the Carnegie's and the Symphony are doing their 75th thing this year. Let's let's do let's do 40. 40 is like a better year. That. Anyway. That's better. I love that. Middle age now. We love it. Yeah. I love yeah. that. And that, and thank you so much. That's great. So let's talk about let's talk about what's up. What's coming up? I, you know, I as I heard and I've released, want to talk about that there's an opening on June 12th, but you know, what does that mean? Is it another June 12th? This one is 19, you know. Let's just go back. It was June 12th, 1983 when you started. Now yeah. you're going to go back and, and do some opening. Yeah, you know, so in 83, we were 5,000 square feet um, in the basement of the old post office building, the old building that we still have. Um, and they saw about, I think it was about 30, 40,000 people a year. Now we have, um, you know, an 80,000 square foot building plus the museum lab, which is another 45,000 square feet. And we have the public park in front that we did. And we did the Hazlet Theater. We got them on their feet, created that separate 501c3. And now they're kind of on their own. Um, so yeah, it's, um, we're opening totally different. We see 300, uh, before, the, before COVID, we saw 320,000 people a year. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, the growth has been remarkable. I mean, you know, Audrey, when you and I were talking back in the 2004, when we first expanded, right. um, we were seeing about a hundred thousand a year. And ever since then, the trajectory has just been going up. So it's been, uh, it's been really great. Um, we're hoping to get back to those numbers. Uh, we are opening June 12th, but we are opening uh, limited uh, tickets and limited capacity just to see how it goes. Um, kids can't, aren't vaccinated. So, you know, we're being very cautious and very careful and putting all the protocols in, in place. Um, so, you know, we're standing with, with kids. We're all going to wear masks, you know, even if we're fully vaccinated uh, because, you know, they're not and they can't get the vaccine. Um, unless they're 12 and right at the same time, you know, we just, we just feel it's that that was the appropriate thing to do for us. Uh, we, we just stayed closed. So we're thrilled about reopening, uh, buy your tickets online. This is a new thing for us. Um, we're really kind of excited about all that we completely changed the first floor of the original children's museum. Okay. Um, 
we put a new exhibit, we redid our makerspace, we are put a new exhibit called On Kindness, where our attic exhibit used to be, and um, kind of playing off of our work with Fred Rogers. Um, and then our, we have a whole new bunch of wonderful exhibits in our garage. And then we open with our Pixar exhibit um, that's based on the Inside Out movie. Um, it's called Emotions at Play. And that will be in our traveling exhibit um, gallery. And then that will be there until January and then it travels the country. Um, we have a number of exhibits that travel the country. That's a huge income stream for us, which is, which is nice. And we redid water play. I mean, it's all, so it's all fresh and new there. Yeah. Um, and the museum lab also has some, some new wonders, um, including an exhibit on portraiture. And uh, we actually just got this huge new printer where you can design your own fabric and then it will print out your fabric. Ooh. Uh, yeah. And we have a new area called Tech Learning Lab where we will be doing uh, our work with Pixar. We, we do a program called Pixar in a Box uh, to learn how to Pixar, the Pixar method. Um, so that's actually going to be located there. And then, of course, we're opening Jim Lacium, which is a three story climbing sculpture. That was done by Mansa Allen, who is from Slovenia, and her art making is uh, using traditional lace making techniques. So, three wow. stories of climbing looks like doilies, and they're beautiful. And it's it's kind of funny. She got stuck here because she couldn't get back to Slovenia. One of the good things that happened uh, for us, and so she stayed in Pittsburgh, and she just kept nodding. So this whole this whole <laughs> three stories of climbing structure just got better and better. And she put models, she actually knitted or knotted uh, models of the COVID um, kind of the- Oh, you're kidding. Out. Yeah, so you can actually go around and find COVID models. Wow. <laughs> so she's still here? Did she go back? She, she's back because she, as soon as she could, she went back to Slovenia. Uh, so that was actually in February um, that she actually traveled back there. But yeah, so there were some oddly good things. <laughs> That's really good. So that can only be climbed. Those are, kids can only climb that, right? So I, adults, I, it's, I just went through on Wednesday and it's tough. I mean, it's a tough climb and it's it for is? older kids. Yeah, it's for older kids. Uh, like uh, the young the young guys have things to do over at the Children's Museum. Museum Lab is really for older kids. So, you know, fifth, sixth, seventh, um, kind of up, up the range from there, as well as the adults. So the mission 38 years ago, is it the same mission that you no, have now? As a matter of fact, how we spent our COVID time is that we did a deep dive into our mission, our vision, our values, our um, strategic objectives. And then we actually came up with action plans um, to meet those. So our new mission is to provide innovative museum, innovative and inclusive museum experiences that inspire kindness, joy, creativity, and curiosity for all learners. Aww. I know it's That's nice. Really and I, I have to, yeah, I actually, I have to tell you, cause I'm kind of thrilled with the process that we went through to yeah, tell us. Um, we decided, uh, this was back in April of last year, um, when we realized that we weren't going to be the same, is that we divided the entire staff of 45 of us that were left. We used to have a staff of 200, and we had to lay people off because we weren't open. Right. So we decided to take the 45 people and divide them into eight task forces that had to do with different aspects of the museum. And those task forces were led by not me and not the directors, but actually the associate directors and the senior managers. So the next generation of museum professionals. So they led them and each one of the task forces were, was um, interdepartmental. Like we just mixed everybody up. And in fact, we put the directors in on teams that weren't directly related to their day job. And so the teams, work together to look at the mission, to redo the mission, redo all of this. Like we all came together and kind of worked together as, as kind of a cohesive unit after the teams talked. And I have to say, it was one of the best experiences. Wow. 
Yeah, so it's, you know, kind of bringing new voices um, and new ideas to the table. Um, it, was, it was a great process. And so we have a whole new direction that we're going um, in some ways. So in some ways, but it's, it's given, true. Given that you have, the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh has been ranked at least one of the top 10 or top five children's museums in the world, right? Am I yeah. capturing that? Like consistently, yes. consistently. Yeah. Yes, and you've received a lot of recognition for the for the lab itself, even though you've been running experiments prior to that. So yeah, you... actually, lots. Of, and we we just got another award from uh, our industry, which is it's the outstanding practice award. So yeah, but we South by Southwest has given us an award. I mean, it's just been it's been a good. It's very nice to get recognized. It yeah. really is. It really is. And, and I'm sure that all the other children's museums have struggled through COVID as well. So you definitely are not alone. So, but we're very excited to hear that there's this sort of gradual reopening and engagement. It couldn't come at a better time. And we really need it. I mean, what are we hearing? What are we hearing in terms of, you know, families? I mean, I'm sure that you're pretty close to the communities and, you know, you have a kinesthetic kind of high touch engagement environment that you know many people bring their kids there on a regular basis I always worry about the kids over the last 16 months and their engagement with new environments and with others what what have you been hearing well it's interesting i i worry about you know the health of families and children mental health of uh, families and children it's been sort of a you know, I think for some families it's been really good, but for other families it's been a complete disaster. I think that's kind of the story of COVID. You know, like there's there's some good, like we've reprioritized what's important in our lives. And, you know, it's made us think that way. And then there's this other, you know, horrible part of it. Um, so it's kind of it's kind of an interesting time, for, I think, for families. We did do a little experiment. We have been doing these uh, kits. Um, uh, to go out to families. Actually, uh, we did last summer, we did boxes of joy. We did 5,000 boxes distributed through the family support centers to kids who weren't going to have a great summer, you know, and so we wanted to provide them with things to play with. Um, we've been working with the family support centers again to do a project um, with the Allegheny Health Department where we've been working with getting kits out to the family support centers and then doing professional development so that the centers can actually distribute the kits and tell people what to do with them. So we've done gardening and we've done, I mean, there's a whole series of like six kits, uh, six different months. Um, so we you know, did art, we did making, we did gardening, we did all sorts of things like that. Um, so that's been really interesting, but we did this other experiment right around Valentine's day where we did an outdoor event and never in my wildest dreams did I think anybody was coming to this event because it was <laughs> night and it was snowing and icy it was like one of those rainy snowy icy black it was so cold and we were all there we had the tables really spread out everywhere and I got there I don't know like 15 minutes before the event was supposed to start and people were queued up to come in. We were trying to keep them socially distanced. I, it was like, uh, oh my God. Like I, I thought, oh, because we had done an outdoor event around Halloween and 30 people showed up, right? Um, this, was, this was a four hour event. And I think we saw, I don't know, like, 500, 800 people, something. I mean, it was raining, it was snowing, it was dark. And there they were with these little kids and all, and every everybody had a mask on. I was like so impressed. Everybody had a mask on. Everybody was very good about social distancing. And, you know, all I kept hearing was thank you for doing this. Like we, we are desperate, like we are desperate to get out. We are desperate to do something with the kids. Um, and so I think there is this real pent up need for you know to be together again and to, to do things for children so. so from from october the darkest days right so from october and by the time you get to february people are we're ready to get out oh, and to embrace oh. it i know it just 
And to this day, I just, honest to God, I wouldn't have gone out with kids. <laughs> it's like, because it was from like, I think we did it from four to eight um, because we wanted to show people had sent artwork, their children's artwork in. So we wanted to project oh. it on the building. And, and it was just, so we wanted to do something and it was, we also, I don't know, I don't know why we decided that we would do this like over dinner thing. And that's the other part was like, who's coming over dinner? It didn't matter. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so it's, it's, you just get this inkling of that and people just, you know, want to do, they want to get out with their kids. They want their kids to see things. They want their kids to experience things and, and we want to be there for them. So, well, can, so imagine what's your sense of like June 12th then is there, there's gotta be even more pent up demand. Yeah. I mean, we, we just started selling tickets. So uh, we've sold, I forget how many for June 12th, but you know, where there's still room, which is good. Okay. Um, and you know, the tickets are now online, which is going to be different for us. Um, and I, I, yeah, I'm, now, I, I have been talking to my colleagues across the country who have also mm -hmm. opened. Um, and I think that's going to, what they've experienced is kind of all over the place. Um, some open, you know, completely booked, and then um, then mm -hmm. attendance drops off. I think it's depending on the numbers, the COVID numbers. But again, they were open when vaccines were not as um, available as they are now. So. So we'll put a link to the tickets in the chat. So if you just tell us what that is, people want a link to the yeah, tickets. Just, just go to our website, www.pittsburghkids.org. Okay, it's, great. You'll so, see there's a banner that says click here for tickets. So let's talk a little bit about Arconic and metals. That's hmm. sort of a little bit of my own history. So I'm very interested to see about, you know, what's going on with that their, their investment in the Children's Museum. Yeah, so they—they they were um, they've actually invested in the Children's Museum quite nicely. I think there's going to be a big announcement about it. Um, and what we've been working with them on, you know, they, uh, anyway, they, they gave the money right before COVID and it's nothing. Uh, always <laughs> tough, right? Always yeah, tough. Like, always tough. Mm -hmm. um, so we've been actually working with them to develop a program in our makerspace that is focused on metals. And so with their support, we have actually started to kind of uh, get steeped in, in metals. So we bought an enameling oven. We um, actually have been doing a lot of we, uh, press that, so that you can emboss things like teaching kids how to emboss. We've uh, been doing welding and although we're gonna to try to do welding in a big way shortly, um, right now we've been doing soldering and, you know, kind of like all the different properties of metals. Um, so we're pretty excited by uh, what we've been doing with kids to date and with kind of what we're, um, what we're doing in professional development going forward for teachers. Um, but there's also a camp that we're gonna be running this summer, um, which is pretty exciting, all about metals. It's the only camp that we're running this summer because we're just kind of we're easing into getting back to some semblance of what we did in the past. Right. We're going to do it better. Um, and we have this big after school program that's uh, that we've been working with our Manchester, with our kids at Manchester Academic Charter School. Oh, we're okay. in our building with us. And uh, yeah. And so it's just, it's going to be a, kind of a wonderful way of introducing metals and metal working uh, to Great. middle schoolers. Um, mm -hmm. So we're, we're thrilled. We're really thrilled. Yeah, talk, talk about an area that doesn't get a lot of attention and in terms of the opportunities and use. I mean, kids can't get their hands on that material, no less understand the uses thereof. Well, I always think that if you imagine, maybe I'm just because I'm interested in women, just imagine if you taught a girl how to weld. Ah. It sounds sexist, but I think you could conquer the world. Like she could conquer the world. I if totally she, agree. I've like, always wanted was, to weld. Right, right? Mm -hmm. And I've always wanted to. Mm -hmm. I just think that actually empowering kids early that they can do things gives them the confidence to think that they can do anything else. Right. Uh, so. so what about um, this gymnasium? Is there any, did we talk about that? No. 
Yeah, we did. We talked about we Monsanto. We talked about that. That's what it's called. That's, right. that's, yeah, that's what it's called. It's, it's yeah. So what happened, just for, because this is an interesting story, in the library building, um, the stacks where they used to keep the books in this one section of the library it would have cost us a quarter of a million dollars to take out uh, because they were structural to the building. So instead, I was like, what could we do instead? And our fabulous exhibit team said, hey, let's do mm -hmm. a climbing uh, structure and that's how it all came about so yeah so what what about um outside and outdoor stuff are you, i mean you do have a lot of different spaces in terms of what you've taken over are there going to be opportunities for outdoor exhibits i'm not trying to put more on you because i know just trying to ramp up and get into where you are but people have been very receptive to outdoors have yeah, you thought we about actually, that? Oh yeah, we've actually uh, done a gardening program for years. We have a gardener on staff. So when there's a museum garden that you can go through, Audrey, if you walk over to the children's museum, okay. you can see all the vegetables and everything. We have an outdoor classroom that's part of our, um, Pittsburgh, our, our project with Pittsburgh Public Schools um, where we have a pre-K in the building. So they use that space. It's a beautiful space with apple trees and right there in the middle of the city. Um, and then we have a, kind of a program that we do with Manchester Academic Charter that's in Museum Lab, um, that they're actually growing their own food. Um, so we're, we're doing all that, <laughs> excuse me, we're doing all that. But then of course we have the park, <laughs> excuse me, Buell Community Park, right. which is in front of the museum that we kind of, we did. And, um, we're doing the summer concert series this year with um, the folks from Nova Place. So free concerts on Wednesdays in the park. Um, so come on down. Um, what time of day? What time of day? It's at noon. Oh, that's Long great. Time. Yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah. so we'll share that. So Jane, another thing is you've really um, seen the transformation of the North Side as well. Mm -hmm. in the time mm -hmm. that you've been there, right? Remember there used to be a project called the Charm Bracelet? Oh, yeah. yeah, that's one of my favorite things we've ever done. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And that was a way of connecting the, uh, well, you say it. it was the way of what was the vision. So the vision was that we had all these cultural institutions on the north side and how we were looking at how to connect them through you know, not just a marketing point mm -hmm. of view, but from an urban design point of view and from kind of a, even a program point of view. And one of the things that we started to do. So we started with kind of, you know, we started with the Warhol and with the mattress factory and um, the aviary and the children's museum. And we invited a team, we had an NEA grant and we invited, I think it was four or five teams, design teams from all over, actually the world. We had a, a designer come in from London and they looked at the North side kind of with fresh eyes and they came up with really interesting ways of connecting um, all of us. Um, so the Hazlet Theater is a direct result of that. So the Warhol and the Children's Museum went together, raised two and a half million dollars, started a separate 501c3, set up a board, hired a director, um, and then did the renovations. Um, and now that's kind of a thriving organization. So that actually was directly from the Charm Bracelet Project. The other thing that we did was the park. There was this need to redo this kind of sunken plaza that was all concrete. Um, and so the Children's Museum took that on. We actually took the park from the city, raised six and a half million dollars, did the park and then gave it back to the city. And we still maintain it. We, still, we have a maintenance fund for that. So, you know, we were, we were looking at what could cultural institutions do to kind of rethink their community. And I will say that when Jeremy um, came, the owner of Nova Place right. came to town, mm -hmm. right. you know, owns our parking lot. And I said, you can't, please don't take away your parking lot because you'll kill us. Mm -hmm. And he said, no, we would never do that because the reason we're here is that you guys stabilize the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. We would have never yeah. bought Nova Place if not for that. So this impact that cultural organizations can have and also the impact that you can have working together. Um, we did so many Oh, interesting and fun projects. I think my favorite was we worked with, um, we all worked together to do like these programs in the park and 
I think it was actually Manchester Craftsman's Guild that hired this artist with money. We did mini grants. Oh, the, the, right. Remember, we actually raised a bunch of money and then we did these mm-hmm. mini grants. And we did this, um, this artist, she did chalk shoes and all of the directors from all the charm bracelet institutions all walked to the park with these chalk shoes on, made marks okay. and people come out and say like, what are you doing? We were like, oh, we're going to the park. And remarkably, people would come along with us and we had a big party celebration in the park that no one, that park is somewhat used by dog walkers, but um, so it got the community in the park. And then we had free kayaking lessons. We worked with Venture Outdoors to have free kayak kayaking lessons on the Lake Arthur there. (laughs) It's not Lake Arthur, but it's that little lake in the middle of the uh, park. Yeah, so it's all kind of fun. Yeah, it's and so you know the little things still. It was the first example of real networking, I think, among the cultural institutions in Pittsburgh. Well, you um, actually that- paved the way, and I'm glad. I'm glad that you have a chance to spend thirty minutes with us. I'm glad that we're going to have this reopening. I'm glad about everything that you're talking about in the future. Think of us, and and just to wrap it up, sort of rhetorically, but definitely meant with some outcome is how can the tech and business community help during this period of time and I think that's what you and I will follow up on but if anyone has ideas and things and ways to participate you can find Jane through the website that we've posted and know that um, you know she's doing this work this is a labor of deep love and she has been an anchor tenant in the revitalization of the north side and she's just been yeah, someone wrote this story is expiring, inspiring. I was going to say Jane's been inspiring to me personally in terms of everything that she's taken on in a very steady hand and in a way that's that's rooted in deep kindness. So I can't thank you enough, Jane, for taking the time with us. We are cheerleaders of yours. And uh, I thank everyone. It's a Friday. It's amazing out in Pittsburgh. I think I had to turn my air conditioning on. And uh, that's what it is. It might snow tomorrow, but it doesn't matter. This is Pittsburgh. So thank you, Jane. Thank you to your team. And uh, really appreciate everyone joining us today. I think, Jonathan, what's up for next week? Well, we are taking Monday off, but we'll be back on Tuesday with Senator Bob Mensch to talk about the clean infrastructure. So it's always good to get our public policy updates here on Business As Usual. Should be fun. Thank you. Thanks, Jane. Stay thank safe. You. Thanks, for, thanks for asking. This was fun. Good to see you all. Take care. Bye-bye.